welcome to a brand new episode of Recent Record Reviews. I'm Hits. And I'm Dan. And this week we'll be reviewing records that yeah. are... Recent! What? 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 Bro. What? Bro. Bro. What? Bro. What? Bro. What? Bro. What? Bro? Who is this? It is... Bro? Master Chef! Ilya Shoyhe. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> okay, uh, anyway, today we'll be talking about three albums and they're all from Singapore. Yep. So, the first one will be an EP. Actually, the, f- the second one is an album as well? I think the second one should be an album. Yes, yes. Enough, right? yeah. uh, yes, of course. The first one is an EP, but the, the following two are actually albums. So yeah. All local? Yes. All local. <laughs> all from all Singapore. Local. Local. <laughs> SG51. That's, that's great. Yes. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> And the first EP that we'll be talking about is from a local duo called Shaky Wrists. Alright. <laughs> okay, so Shaky Wrists is a gospel slash soul duo coming out of Singapore. They are another in like a super long line of really talented young acts coming out of the Hybrid mm. Theory Collective mm, community very talented, label. Yeah, very, yeah, very talented. talented. And fun fact, Shaky Wrists is also made up of uh, Sheikh Akbar from the Summer State. So obviously oh. this is a huge, uh, okay. huge, huge departure for him and that got me intrigued in the first place. The other half of Shaky Race is made up of another man called uh, Christopher Gross, who you may remember from last week's Triple R yes. as uh, one half of uh, Munchies. And, and nowhere and else. Yeah. No I have done yeah. nothing else. I've never heard that, that name before. Yeah. Yeah. Christopher yeah. Gross? Yeah, yeah. 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 I know, such a mysterious man. Yeah, I don't know mm-hmm. who he is. Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> but um, anyways, before putting out this collection of uh, songs on SoundCloud, they were actually like kind of flooding our new suites with like release a single of a single of a single. Yes. There was a track called Should've Known Better, Best Days of My Life, and Too Slow, which ca- kind of came out in three subsequent weeks and they actually like put like really cute thumbnail images on all yeah. these tracks like one of them was Whoopi Goldberg from Sister Act another was Drew Barrymore from the 90s Classic. Classic Steve films. Buscemi yeah Steve Buscemi also looks like Shake, so I think that fits it looks like Shake or looks like shit Shake. Oh, shake. Okay. Shake. Just, just, <laughs> I was like, why are you so stupid now? The shit. The yeah. shit. The shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know. So, like, um, so I guess that's a compliment to shake in tangent. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so, what do you guys think of this uh, freshly released EP? I would say same thing like the Munchies the one I did last week. Yeah. It would really, it would do really well in the live setting. Yeah. Uh, and I listen. To it on my headphones, I'm like, okay. I would rather listen to it live and in a party setting than alone, I think. It's just, it's just my opinion, man. It's, it's, it's like your you opinion, man. It's, yeah. like opinion, man. Yeah. it's like your opinion and thoughts, you know? <laughs> 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 Uh, we, are, we are okay, like, we just drank uh, too much Red Bull, I think. Yeah. Uh, Shaky Wrist for me, it was actually quite different from Munchies because there are a lot more ideas here. You know, they, they were trying to do this whole gospel thing, but then suddenly you have like a lo-fi acoustic track, and they were trying to inject more soul in R&B, so at least this is more adventurous. And mm-hmm. of course, production here by Chris, very, very good once again. I mean, Happy Theory has definitely made its mark. In terms of production, like, they're really getting some of the best in Singapore. For sure. So, uh, I think that it's definitely an easier and more pro- like thought-provoking listen mm-hmm. at least than Munchies. Nice. Well, um, I feel like the initial three, re- three releases were the strongest from uh, the, mm-hmm. the whole EP. I think yeah. those were the single singles. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel that other than that, like uh, another song called You Are Fried, again featuring Video Kaya Kat Kru, they're everywhere! Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and also a man named Fox fe- features on this song as well. What Who's Fox? It? What a surprise! We still don't know who's the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, who is Fox? Um, meanwhile, um, I also like the last song called Summer Love, <laughs> yeah. which is uh, featuring a guy called Timmy Autumn. It's like a nice slow burning coda. Uh, and I like the sepia tone, folksy, bluegrass, gospel thing that they have going yeah. on. It's really fresh for Singapore and I admire its novelty. There aren't really any other contemporary musicians in Singapore doing anything like this. So, But that being said, I kind of wish they would ruminate on these songs a bit more. Uh, yes. Because I think like they they kind of sound like demos at the moment, and it could have it could have been like a uh, way way better. Like I I I like this EP already. Yeah. But, like, I just think it could have I could have like loved you, it. You see the potential. Really. I see so much yeah. potential and like kind of a bit of a way. Mm-hmm. But like it's good. Uh, it's okay. really good, which could have been a lot better. Call really? Um, giving this a seven point five. That's how much I like it. Like if you had like spent a bit more time on it, it could have been nine, could have been ten. I don't know. 
Wow, mm. then. I don't, yeah, it could have been, but like there was the potential, like, there was the ceiling. For okay. It. Yeah. Uh, I think I'll probably give it a 7 out of 10. It's still very enjoyable as an EP, mm. and uh, yeah, definitely something I'd like to see more from as well. Mm. Yeah. I will need to listen to this album again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but for now, I give it 6.5 Okay Because I haven't given it that much of a listen, honestly mm-hmm. yeah. Sure but And I also have to shout out the EP's name, Greatest Hits Which is a really cute name for our first release Yes True, yeah. True. Oh, okay Do it again Oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> The next album that we're reviewing is our friend, Ashraf from Anna Anna Quiz He has his own And also Silhouette and, yes. also and, and also from his side project with his girlfriend Min. Mine. Is Min? It, it's Min? Is it, oh, it's, it's a jazz. Min. So it's a jazzy project kind nice, of Nice, nice. But anyway, he has his own project now, which is his release is called Dry Riser actually. What do you think? <laughs> oh. Uh I I actually I gotta give my hands off to uh Ashraf because like he he has been like a primary songwriter in NQA, so obviously like we know his talents, but man. Yeah. This definitely highlights some of his like some of his strength when he is a solo writer for mm-hmm. sure. Like uh, the the album as a whole is quite messy because obviously uh, it's just a compilation of his tracks just put together. But man, some of the songs here are very intriguing. Yeah, for sure. Mm. And uh, I think that especially that like, he's going for the whole like effects twin esque like IDM sound. But there, he has a very good sensibility when it comes to melodies. Mm. And uh, obviously you can tell like the the whole prog rock thing is still rubbing off of him. And it's mm. like a very nice ambient space when it comes to his use of beats as well. Sure. So it's not too overcrowded sometimes. Uh, I think I actually really enjoyed it surprisingly. It's, I think his influences really show in this. I mean, yeah. it's still like an electronic palette, mm-hmm. but he's using like multi genre brushes. So For sure. Like yeah, post yeah. rock, jazz, map rock, mm-hmm. everything, everything that Anaquist is kind of like. Yeah. He actually does it in a kind of electronic. Uh, canvas kind of thing. Yeah, and, and not in a way where we, it just sounds like an Equus effort because no, it just, no, no, doesn't no, sound no. like it, it at all. Yeah. Sound at all like it. Oh, but it does sound like they could be an Equus song. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That were just like not used. Yeah, he, just like sketches. They were just ideas. Ideas, yeah. Ideas, yeah. yeah. He, By he, the way, an Equus release a fucking album now. <laughs> Ooh, man. How Ooh, long already? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> anyway, I would say this album is a, is more like a sonic doodle kind of thing. I mean, yeah. it has been an album making. It's not really an album. I would say it's just a mixtape of. The songs he made over six years. Yeah, yeah between can, May 2011 and, exactly. and like June of 2015. Yeah. Yes. So most, it's been most of the songs you can actually find on SoundCloud. The exactly. older versions of yeah. it. But this one just re-updates everything into one package. Yeah. And you can see actually he seems he, he actually like weaves his songs together. Yeah. Although they were just supposed to be like separate mm-hmm. separate separate yeah. songs. He tries to make it cohesive. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But I would say most of the songs are just short pieces. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like most of them are just like less than two minutes or mm-hmm. just yeah. but it's, it's all really minutes. sketches lah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Which is why like mixtape is actually the most fitting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. mixtape, yeah. Mixtape. I actually do like that it kind of brings me on like, an emotional journey, like uh, there's like manically detachment, like exhilaration, <laughs> that kind of stuff. It actually reminds me of like <laughs> Her Space Holiday or like mm. the album Leaf or something yeah. like that uh, kind, kind, kind yeah. of that kind of vibe yeah, yeah, yeah. so I, I, I like it although like I do not think it's IDM at all like he, he tagged it that on uh, on Bandcamp yeah. yeah it didn't sound like IDM to me really? Or, yeah like not at all this sounds like a very conventional indie electronica kind, mm-hmm. of, kind of album not like but, but that was both from it. IDM one I suppose so it didn't I don't know, like that's not my definition of IDM, but, but that's just my opinion, man. <laughs> just his opinion, man. So, like, discuss in the comments below, what is IDM? <laughs> it's intelligent. Oh my god. Dance music. So he's saying this, this is not IDM, so it's not intelligent. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't even think it's dance music. <laughs> exactly, that's why ah, he's not okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, 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 but I think like the album is like, it's, it's stitched together very, very finely. Yeah. So uh, the, the songs kind of hardly distinguish themselves from the overall pace. It's like slow and optimal, and like the constructions vary between like listless ambiance and like um, introverted, like more pop melodies, mm, yeah. which, which I like. Uh, that you're right, there, there are like shades of like uh, stuff that he's written for Enequist and stuff like that. But like it's nowhere near Enequist, so this isn't derivative at all. It's just a completely it's introspective. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. This is a look into him. Into yeah, our, exactly, our yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, what would you read it? Ooh, this hmm. is tough. It's a mixtape, mix but it's tape. not really an album. Okay, I'll give it a seven out of ten. Seven. Yes. Yeah, I'm. I'm going for six point five. Mm. I will go six point five as well. Yeah. Because although it is 
like he speaks volumes of his creativity yeah. mm-hmm. and his uh, one man um, craftsmanship in making beats and tunes. I would really like to see him fully flesh out all the songs, because mm-hmm. all his songs are just sketches, like I said. But and uh, and for me, the only only the last two songs are fully fleshed out ideas. Um, the earlier ones are just you know like doodles, like you said. Mm-hmm. And I would love to see him do a fully a full full on album. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just so yeah. Songs, yeah. Or even just an EP as well. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Okay, I got Johnny fun yet. Ah, 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 and the last album we'll be talking about today is the new album from The Observatory and <gasps> there is a new album by The Observatory! Uh, no, no, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, as it seems like since 2014, they've pretty much dropped like an album almost every year. Once a year? Yeah, because Very like consistent. they've been they've been spacing out their albums. Um, they released an album at least like once every two years up until Catacombs, that was in 2011. Yes. Yeah. And then Oscilla, it came out in 2014 and ever since then they've been extra prolific which is mm-hmm. quite amazing actually. It's considering, surprising considering the, the lineup changes. You know, it definitely. Yeah. Lineup changes and the fact that the quality is pretty consistent. But today we'll be talking about the latest album which is called August is the Cruelest. Mm-hmm. It is. So, it is the Cruelest. Yes, mm. we'll get to that later. Not as bad as October, but yeah. Still. December is a lovely yes. Mm. New album title. That's, yes. ours. <laughs> That's ours, don't take that off. Yes, yeah. yeah. We'll sue you. <laughs> so anyway, like um, the new album was actually recorded like last year and um, it, it's funny because like last year, um, 2014 they released Oscilla oh. which was probably the most politically charged yet and then in 2015 they released Continuum which was Continuum, one, which was actually a combination of a few yeah. years of research and recording in Bali with um, gamelan. Tra- yeah, gamelan, all the traditional yeah. instruments in Indonesia. So uh, basically this new album, yeah. August is a Cruelest, is a proper follow-up to Oscilla because Continuum was more like a sidestep. Yeah. What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah um, it's, as Dan has mentioned, the LP really returns them to Oscilla territory. Like it further explores like the darkness and the rage and like fighting against like the yeah. oncoming black, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But it's it's... Sonic Fury, like, it's it's challenging and it's it's a disconcerting piece of work, yeah. which I like. It it draws inspiration from the works of T. S. Eliot and like uh and Poet Yan Jun, so you know it's gonna be dark and heavy and depressing yeah. as fuck. That's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Uh, and as if that wasn't heavy enough, it's all intertwined with the usual dystopian rock sensibilities, mm. processed through like a very political prism. And also like special shout out, like this album sounds great. Yeah. Like, it was recorded in Norway, uh, I think Bergen, Norway, except yeah. for a couple okay. of tracks which was mm-hmm. recorded in Singapore. Uh, like uh, the ops always uh, have. They always like, deliver. Yeah. Yeah. Mad, Sonically, they always deliver. Mad like. attention to detail to the sound. Like this is perfect. This is exactly what I think they want it to sound like. It yeah. lays out like a desolate abstract kind of unforgiving landscape but and I think extra shout out so like I've never heard the drums on an observatory record sound this clear mm, yeah man oh my God. I love this one. and the fact that they got Cheryl on drums so so it's like it's double whammy wow. yeah, yeah, yeah Cheryl is such a beast on drums yeah. one of my favourite drummers in Singapore beast beast, beast. beast. Uh, but like even though we're talking about like how dark and like uh, yeah. desolate it is there is like a sense of um, hope amongst the yeah. urban bleakness that they have sure. like um, it's designed to like I guess grip you and shock you out of apathy and like just make mm. you think yeah. and like that, that's, that's the sense of hope yeah. I think I like that contrast, that hypnotic contrast. Yeah. It's like violent percussions, yeah. violent yeah. riffs, and then it kind of interspersed with uh, Leslie's bleak, icy vocals. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's like that kind of contrast. It's a, it's a standard observatory trope. Yeah, so it's for that, sure. that kind of hypnotic yeah. vocals and uh, clashing instrumentals, but it really plays well together, especially in uh, Everything is Vibration. Mm-hmm. Everything is, is Vibration. vibration. <laughs> yeah, I really love this album. It's uh, sinister, it's raw, it's explosive, it's like metal. It's metal. It's metal. And I think that um, this feels like the proper continuation of Osilla because like, mm. Osilla was when they were really exploring territory from Catacomb. So At the point in time, I thought Osilla was the strongest album yet. Yeah, mm. but I, I, still, I, I, still I, honestly, no, I honestly think August is actually stronger because like Osilla at times, the, the hypnotic rhythms that they were doing Bothered on monotony. The thing is, at the time I didn't see it, but compared to August, like it actually feels like it now. Right. Because uh, August musically, it's more diverse, sure. sonically rich as well. So I think that like the instruments sound fantastic, especially like we we're talking about the production. So mm-hmm. I think overall, it's definitely come to like their strongest album yet. I think this yeah. this album sounds great live. I've heard it like a couple mm. of times. This? Mind, the songs? Mind blowing. Yeah, yeah, these songs, yeah. So they played like Substation, Singapore Inside Out. And they, they fuse it with some Oscilla tracks, which mm. makes it total sense. Mm. Yeah. Like, uh, my, my favorite song from this album is uh, the, con- the concluding song, The Weight of It All. Nice. It's like a nice little catharsis of yeah. all, all of that heaviness. 
Uh, and then you can there's like little touches of like traditional Chinese instruments mm, like the guzheng yeah. and like the bizi. It's very subtle. Could, yeah. It's very subtle, yeah. yeah. Cheryl's coming There's probably Cheryl's uh, yeah. influence yeah, from like yeah, yeah. Sa- 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 yeah. So which is also another dope band, please check that out. So what's your rating? Uh I'm giving this an eight. Um mm-hmm. it's it's nice to know that like they're keeping up the quality after For so sure. long. I'm not too sure. Like has the observatory actually progressed from Osilla? Like um, uh, is it kinda the same? In my in my opinion they have. Yeah. But at the same time, they're still within the same territory. They just expanded it. Yeah. Like was Osceola like kind of like less less proggy, more. Extreme, it was more, more proggy actually. It was proggy and straightforward in the, in the sense where they were following more of like this crowd rock sensibility, mm. where they were just following like the same rhythms over and over again to build to like this explosive conclusion. Uh, okay. So whereas for like August August Scrollers, they were applying that but with other ideas as well. I feel that this is a sequel album. Yeah. To Asila. To Asila. Continuum was just the. Asila, Continuum was like an in between. Yeah. Filler. In fact, like I mean, you you look at the progression of. The observatory continuum is more. It's really a side. It's step. a break. It's a yeah. Break. yeah, it's one of those like one-off episodes you see in a series before like they explore like the larger. So one of comics. Yeah, so one of. Okay, I would give this seven actually. Seven? Like it's a it's a fiery burner like the album cover. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a very nice, kind of uh, accompanying soundtrack and especially you know like um it's been inspired by the haze I think. Was it? Yeah, it was maybe. Maybe in the in the. Let us know what you think. <laughs> right now in the comments yeah. below. <laughs> so actually, I would give it like seven. seven. But I I do get that sense though. There's like this like Mad Max like sense where like there's yeah, this cloud yeah, yeah. Of of smoke and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I get what you mean. And was the and did the haze happen in August? I mean, I know the illusion of August to something else, but I know did it, but did the haze happen in August or so? I'm not sure. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. yeah, but okay for me like I will give it eight point eight point five over ten because I've been a fan for Observatory for quite a while and I really think this is their strongest album yet, and I think this really shows the fact that they are in really in knee deep in their career probably like 13, 14 years, yeah. and yet they're still pulling out al- uh, albums as strong as this. I think I really gotta give my hands off to them. So yes, So if any other albums that you like that you like us to review, please do let us know in the comment section down below, and don't forget to subscribe. And thank you for watching. Peace.